Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Maya and this is Inspired by Maya. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this flounced hem skirt. A flounce is just that, um, what do you call it? Like a frill, like a curvy frill, which is uh, not made with gathering, but is made out of circles. So you can have like a full circle or a half circle and then you like cut out the center of it and then it kind of just spreads out and opens into this lovely little flare. So that's what I've decided to do on the bottom of this skirt. It's really easy to, uh, really easy to, it's really easy to pattern draft as well. So look out for a tutorial on how to make this pattern. So as usual, I started off by making my design on Adobe Illustrator and I played around with different um, hems. So I was gonna sew up this skirt that had um, go days in there because I've never sewed go days before and the design of the skirt just looked really good. But then I thought about it and I was like, mm, I don't think I'll wear this skirt as much as I you know, think I would. So I decided to scrap that and go for something that I can see myself wearing maybe to work and stuff like that. But maybe in the future, I'll give it a try. So I just went for a more simpler design, which is just the flounce. So yeah, I mapped that out in Illustrator and then I started to edit my pattern. So I just used my skirt basic block. The fitting of the skirt was perfect for me already. So the main thing I needed to do was like shorten it and add a flounce and create a waist facing. So that's what I did. And then obviously I made my sample and then from there I just edited my basic skirt pattern in Adobe Illustrator again um, and there wasn't much changes for me to make because I like the way that my skirt block fits me I just decided to raise the waistband a little bit, shorten the skirt and then add the flounce on. So once I did that, I went ahead and printed out my pattern, um, cut out my sample fabric but you'll see the process of all of that now. As usual, I went ahead and made a sample and everything sewed up really nicely. There were a few adjustments I had to make, but they were so minor, but I edited them and felt confident enough to go ahead with the real thing without a second sample. But then something did happen later on, which I'll touch on later, but I have said this before and I don't know why I don't follow my own advice, but please always try and use a fabric that matches your final fabric as close as possible, because mine were very different and it definitely affected the outcome of the flare on the skirt. The sample flounce was very drapey and my final fabric ended up coming out super boxy and stiff. I chose a checkered slash tartan type of wool fabric and I love working with this type of pattern because it's hard to cut it wrong. For example, you can't really cut against the grain because the lines indicate the straight line. So I did just that and lined all my pieces up with the pattern in the fabric. I also used the fabric lines and colours to help me indicate my seam allowance. For example, I put my pattern in a position where the white line goes in one centimetre, so I know that's where I will sew it up later. Don't forget to mark all your darts and notches and then carefully cut the pattern out with a sharp pair of scissors. Once that's done, the first thing I did was sew up the darts. I used the pinning method as always, making sure it goes through the line on both sides of the fabric and then taking it to my sewing machine, back stitching at the beginning and hand tying the thread ends. Then at this point you should overlock the following pieces but you'll see what I decided to do. Pin your skirt side seams together and sew with a straight stitch. I also want to point out that I cut my pieces out in a way that made the fabric pattern match up which was very satisfying to sew and is another thing that adds that bit of professionalism to your garment. Once that's done we can move on to the invisible zipper which is the not so hard hardest bit of constructing this garment. First I placed my skirt down right sides facing up and marked one centimetre, one centimetre and marked one centimetre in and down on my skirt. Then place the zipper, right sides facing the skirt against the edge and double check that the zipper teeth are away from the edge of the garment. Then I pinned the top of the zipper where the pull stops to the marking we made earlier and pinned it in place. Now we can move on to the sewing machine. So because we're sewing an invisible zipper, we need to use an invisible zipper foot, which allows us to sew super close to the edge, a lot closer than a normal zipper foot would allow. The foot has ridges underneath, so the zipper teeth slot inside as you sew. So change your foot and then place your garment underneath, making sure the teeth are sitting in the groove properly and make sure it's sitting in there properly. Otherwise we'll sew on the zipper teeth and that zipper will not zip up in the end. I 
I ended up moving on to the zip, forgetting to overlock and had to do it at this point. If you end up doing the same as me, be careful when overlocking near the zipper because I've ruined a garment at this exact point and I gave up sewing for like a month. Anyways, once that stitch has been made, we can do the same to the other side and make sure you position the other side precisely on the one centimeter marking we made earlier because you don't want a mismatched back seam, especially if you're working with checkered fabric. Now here's what your zip should look like. Mine matches up perfectly so I'm really happy with it and I can move on to finishing the back seam. This bit is really easy to do. You want to pin the back seam closed as normal. Again, I'm matching up the pattern on my fabric. And then we're going to do a straight stitch from the bottom right up until we reach the zipper and secure it with a back stitch. You're going to have to change your foot to a normal zipper foot so we can get close to the zipper seam. And here's what it should look like, lovely and flush. Now we've got two steps left, we can either attach the waistband facing or move on to the flounce. I decided to do the harder bit first which was the flounce, so I pinned my flounce together around the outer edges, changed my machine foot back to a normal foot and sewed with a straight stitch. I just want to mention quickly that I did change my flounce in the end because it didn't turn out how I wanted it to look, so I reduced the flare which caused me to have two side seams. It's a very minor change which has already been adjusted in the pattern. If you are interested in downloading it, the link will be in the description box down below. Back to the sewing. So I sewed all around the circumference of my flounce and then I graded the seam by cutting one side of the seam allowance. And then I also snipped into the seam so that when we flip it right sides out, it lays flat. So I flipped it right sides out and moved to the iron. I pressed the seam so that you could see about two to three millimeters of the right side on the lining side. This will cause your seam allowance to be uneven so one side will sit higher than the other but this is exactly what we need to finish the hem. Next I mark the seam allowance guide on the right side of my fabric on the side with the longer seam allowance edge. Then I pinned the smaller edge right sides facing the skirt. So take your time when doing this step and ease the pieces into each other. When sewing curves it may seem like it doesn't fit but this is because they're cut on the bias which means the fabric is a lot more fluid and can stretch. The best way to do this step is by quartering your fabric so I like to mark it with chalk or pins and then just match it up to the seams on the skirt and then just pin each section. Then do a straight stitch all around and don't forget to back stitch. Once that was done, I snipped the seam allowance to release the tension and pressed the seam allowance inwards towards the hem edge. Now we can work on finishing the inside. There's different ways you can go about doing this. There's the lazy man version and there's a professional version. The lazy man version is just to overlock the edge, pin it flat to the inside of the skirt and then do a stitch in the ditch. But because I want this garment to have a flawless finish, I'm gonna fold the seam allowance inwards following the seam allowance guide we marked earlier and pin the fabric down so that it's about two millimeters above the seam line. Pin it in place from the right side of the fabric and check that you've caught it on the back. I like to push the pin in as close to where I plan to stitch to give me more reassurance that I will catch the fabric. Now that that's done, we can do a stitch in the ditch, which is where you stitch right in the middle of a seam, making this stitch virtually invisible if done properly. It definitely takes patience and control to do one, so if you don't feel confident, I would suggest doing a top stitch instead. Now for the last step onto the waist facing. I took my facing pieces, sewed the side seams up and did a little top stitch in detail on the side seams and then I added my label. Then you want to match side seam with side seams of the skirt, right side spacing and pin all around. When you reach the zipper area, fold out the zipper seam allowance and pin the edge of the facing to the edge of the zipper seam allowance. We have to use a zipper foot for this step so swap out your foot again and then sew close to the edge of the zip near the teeth and then when you reach the top do a pivot stitch and continue along the waistband until you reach the other side of the zipper. Now snip the corners of the skirt facing seam allowance so that we can flip it out and have no bulk. And this is what it should look like, lovely, neat and secure. 
The last couple details I did were top stitch the lining side of the waist facing seam allowance so that it reduces the chances of it rolling over and then I also pinned the facing side seams to the skirt side seams and did a stitch in the ditch so that the facing doesn't move. The skirt's officially finished now so let's move on to the final reveal. My goodness guys, it was so cold during that final reveal. But yes, this brings us to the end of the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and that you learned something new. Um, I really enjoyed making this skirt. It was really simple and easy to sew up, even though I did mess up along the way. It was a minor fix, but yeah. Um, I really enjoyed making skirts. Like I just think that they're so easy to assemble and the pattern making behind it is quite easy as well. So I'm thinking I might release my first like proper pattern making video where I show you how to make a skirt block. Blocks are basic patterns which um, can be edited to make new designs. So yeah, I think I might start off with the skirt. Let me know if you're interested in that. Also, don't forget to follow my Instagram page at inspiredbymaya.uk. I have started to be a lot more active on there doing little reels and stuff like that. So you might want to check it out. And also, if you liked this pattern, the pattern's available to download on my Etsy page. The link will be in the description box down below. But I think that's everything around the skirt that I have to say. So... If you haven't subscribed already, please do and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.